What's going on guys? So I'm gonna show you something. Uh, Toro 24 inch snow blower. Okay. Um, just getting it ready for the winter. However, I noticed that the uh, crank, I removed it, three eight millimeter bolts. I noticed when I removed the crank, or the, sorry, the pull handle, I noticed when I pulled the handle, so it's gonna sit like this on the snow blower. Snow blower's over here. And you pull it, regular rope, and then it gets skinny, right? So there's some issue here. So this will be a little tutorial on how to fix this problem. As you see the little rope that's inside the, the main rope. I don't know what you call that. I'll call it the core. <laughs> so if it's completely torn, you're gonna have to uh, untie the knot that's in there, okay? Feed a new one, so you're gonna have to line up this hole where the handle sits, okay? With the hole that's gonna be inside here. So you might have to rotate this slightly, and then you have to peek through here and then line them up, right? So you're gonna have to line these guys up. So as you see, it's at the top, right? Right there. So you're gonna have to line it up with the hole in this uh, tan colored uh, circle in here. So I don't have to do that today. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to attach this bad boy up. So what I'm gonna do is we need to cut this. But if I cut this and I let this go that I'm holding with my thumb, it's gonna feed its way back in and then you're screwed to get the disassembly. The whole, uh, the whole unit. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it until we see some good rope, okay? Make sure it's nice and snug. Hold this right here with your one hand. And then I'm gonna see if I can use my uh, my hose clamp pinching tool to hold this in position. So I'm gonna squish it like so. Oh, that's not gonna work. Okay, step two. Do not use one of these fuel line clamps. Hold it with your hand and we're gonna use some needle nose spice grips. So we're gonna pinch the rope right where we wanna cut it. Let's go a little bit further in. That way we can tie a knot afterwards. Nice and tight. Now it's not gonna feed back inside the machine. So we're losing a lot of rope here so you want to grab the handle and push upwards, okay? And then you can cut that knot off. So let's see, I'm going to use my uh, side cutters. Okay, I'm going to cut this knot off. Okay, so cut that guy off. Handle removes. Now we still got our little setup here. So what we're going to do is cut the rope right in front of the vice grips. So right about here, nice snip. Okay, now I'm gonna use a lighter. If anybody, why you like the maple leaves? That's how you know I'm in Canada. So I'm gonna hold this like this. It's pretty cold here in Canada, so there we go. I'm just gonna shrink this rope. Everything's, all the little fibers are gonna contract together. Heat it up, squish it with your hand, with your finger, do one of these, make a nice skinny end. You want to do this because you want it to be able to feed inside this hole. So right now I'm going to hold this with my other hand so it doesn't retract and we're screwed. Or at least my scripts. I'm going to continue to hold it. Now what I can do is further down the rope. I'm going to use my vice grips again in case I lose grip for whatever reason. Clamp it, let go, it's in position. Now I got some rope to play with and I got the handle that I'm going to have to tie. So we're going to feed it through here. Let's see if we can get a better angle there. Let's see, you can see the red of my jacket. So I'm going to feed it in here slowly. If it doesn't want to feed properly, you can always grab a little hook. A little tool. Okay, so I see the end there, so I'm gonna grab a little. Uh, let's see what we got here. 
one of these little fine tools. Try to jam it in there and grab the rope like so. We got it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is gonna tie a double knot. So a long time ago, I used to be in sailing school. You don't wanna just tie a regular granny knot through the loop and in. What you wanna do is you wanna go like this. It's hard to see. Go like that, go once. So instead of going in, you go around the tree one, one extra time, tie it here, and move. So this is what we call an eight knot, as you see the figure eight. Now with your thumb, you're gonna push this up because you wanna have minimal, minimal uh, material, the stuff that we burned at the, at the top. Push it with your thumb and then tighten the other one. So you know what, for this, I can use, <clears throat> some pliers pull the tip the one we burnt and the other side of the knot and pull it really hard there we go she's not gonna let go that's a serious knot so I'm gonna drop that in set the handle like so and what we can do now is release the vice grips now she's gonna retract on her own there you have it you have your new knot inside your pull handle. Didn't have to touch anything on the inside of the unit. And it's uh, you don't have as much rope, but I mean, that's still plenty, you know? If you're getting proper spark and you're getting good fuel, there's absolutely no reason why your uh, snowblower would not fire, okay? Uh, for example, this uh, snowblower has been sitting outside for three days now. I started about three to three, four days ago. And it started on the first pull, you know, choked down all the way, primed the bulb about five times. And I didn't have to, like, you know, send it. I had to just, you know, gently, as long as you get the, the engine moving, right? As long as the cylinder's moving up and down, that's uh, activating your spark and it's pushing fuel inside the cylinder and it should ignite. If you have fuel and you have spark and you have air, there's zero reason why you should heave on this like a like a madman, you know? So now what you want to do is get this back to your snowblower, line it up. There's going to be some slots here. Kind of wiggle it around until it sits flush on the machine. Make sure it's not, uh, you know, doing one, of, doing one of these, right? Sometimes if you don't line things up properly. But yeah, we should, uh, we should be able to mount this bad boy up. Let's see what the unit looks like here let's see here we go it's gonna go on there like so unfortunately i need two hands to mount it but you guys get the idea so if your rope isn't completely torn off like mine wasn't uh then this is a little trick you, you can use to kind of get you you know out of a pickle especially if you don't have electric start like this unit has um this can be you know the difference between finishing off the snow blowing job or you know walking through knee-high snow so if you want to do it the right way then you're obviously gonna have to go to a hardware store or whatnot home depot get a new um pull cord rope pull rope whatever they're called uh snow blower lawnmower one uh they're all gonna work okay these the premises identical the, the units are very very similar right so yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully this will kind of help somebody out. So remember, it's it's savable. So you don't have to, you know, a lot of times people snowblow at night after work. They, they, they live far from the store and it's a pain in the butt to try to find something, right? And I mean, in a, in a real pinch, you could even use like a yellow boat rope as long as you can fit it through the slot. I mean, if you're in a pinch, you know, you, you got to use what you got to use, right? And if that doesn't work, one final trick if you're in a big pickle and you know you don't have a rope it completely ripped off what you can do if you have tools and an impact gun you have to see you just have to remember which way the engine rotates but i've seen videos where guys will put an impact driver nut on here and spin the engine like that right or another trick you can do is uh you could tie like a leather belt around here or any sort of rope for that matter Tie it really tight and then just give it a pull, right? That's a really old farmer's trick. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this, this can uh, help you guys out. And by the way, these controller 
joystick shoot controls. I hate them. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. If you're buying a snowblower, try to avoid these guys. I mean, it's a personal preference, but from my experience of using this for years and years, I think I've used this guy for six years. I bought it pre-owned. But um, if you're finding one, try to find the one with the crank handle right here. So much easier for the shoot control, right? And those things hardly ever break. This thing, you got the cables and like there's two cables going to, to the shoot control, right? The other one's just a rod with a gear on it, right? It's much simpler, so. Yeah, so thanks for watching guys and uh, good luck. Happy snowboarding.